Hello, my name is Jessica Black, and the multimodal presentation I'm going to be doing today is over what has contributed to the decline of our national parks and how we can solve this issue. So just a little intro to the national parks themselves. They are areas that are set aside through government intervention that are done so with the goal of preserving the environment and the natural properties that come with it. Um, there are two situations that will be able to qualify a unit to be a national park that includes um, being for public recreation and enjoyment and for scientific purposes. Um, the ultimate purpose of the parks is to protect the land and the wildlife that inhabit the area from outside circumstances such as human behavior and development. So the national park system was created on August 25th, 1916 by President Woodrow Wilson after signing the Organic Act, which came along with all kinds of um, agencies that were put in place just for the same reason as the national park system, to uphold the natural beauty of the environment that we already had. Now, um, the system does manage over 400 units, and you don't essentially have to be just a park to qualify. So like the things that also qualify include military parks and battlefields, historical parks, memorials, preserves, recreational areas, rivers, trails, and uh, seashores. And then in the photo I have is just a little breakdown of the national park symbol that they have um, that covers exactly what they protect. So obviously the culture and the history of the national parks, the vegetation, the beautiful scenery, the water and recreational resources, and the wildlife that come with it. Um, so why is this important? This is the importance of this presentation is to highlight the decline of the national parks and how it's affected the ecosystem. Um, among the decline, it's important to note that these lands are protected nationally and through a service implemented to preserve the natural beauty and provide a safe environment away from human innovation and destruction. So this safe environment is meant to protect the wildlife, as shown before, the biological life, everything that grows within the ecosystem. To allow this kind of growth by supporting the national park system is to allow balance between nature and suburbanization that has been obviously taking over for the last hundred years. So the ways that the parks have been in decline, there have been many different reasons why. Um, some of these reasons, reasons include the booming visitation numbers. There are just simply way too many people visiting the parks and the parks cannot handle it. The lower availability of rangers. There's no funding to pay for these rangers. No, there's no funding to pay for the beautification of the park in general. So there's nobody there to create a safe environment for people. <clears throat> the push to commercialize the parks, basically, they want to bring people in, they want to bring companies to take over, and doing so, you have to abs uh, absolutely mull out all of the actual natural beauty that's there, which goes against the basic principle of the national park system. And then lastly, the environmental effects, um, global warming, climate change, everything like that. So starting with the booming visitation numbers, my first article shows an example that kind of puts things um, in a visual. So Yellowstone National Park is absolutely massive. Zion National Park is 150,000 acres, which is 1 15th of Yellowstone. But the parks have the same number of visitors. So this park that is absolutely not meant to hold that many visitors is getting the same amount and is getting completely overwhelmed. So um, ways that the shift in the ecosystem is being caused by human behavior and by the amount of people that are visiting is because they're coming to the parks and they're just leaving trash everywhere. They're leaving a mess of the park. They're going off natural trails and creating their own that don't come with the history of the park. And then my second article, it just shows how um, agencies are more directed towards pleasing the people than keeping the beauty of the national parks. So they're cutting down trees, they're paving um, fields just so they can put companies in and they just want to put concessions in and 
they're kicking out animals that it is their home their ecosystem because humans are afraid of them so they're more concerned with how the people view the park and how much how much attention these people can bring into the park rather than how the park is functioning the lower availability of rangers um, basically as i said before there's no funding there's nobody to pay for these rangers so there's just there's no more so we have some left over but they're more concerned with people visiting and how to make these this visit better than any other visit they've ever had so they're not concerned with the safety of the people so um in one of the cases that i found there were four people that went camping in the appalachian mountains and there was a guy that came across their tents and said hey i'm gonna pour gas all over your tents and burn you guys to death so they tried to get a hold of the rangers couldn't do it um two of the people left they didn't want to deal with it ronald sanchez and his partner stayed and they were both stabbed ronald was stabbed fatally and the other guy had to walk six miles before he could get a hold of anybody and the ranger just absolutely could not get a hold of anybody because he was by himself so it just shows that the safety of people is being put at risk because there's just nobody to watch over these parks then the push to commercialize the parks and reduce funding this comes from the trump administration where he wanted to pull money away from the parks and then commercialize them so they could that they could create their own money and um so he could put the money elsewhere so obviously that comes with previously said bringing in companies and bringing in concessions and just defying the ultimate central idea to the national parks environmental effects um, these include global warming climate conditions affecting biological life and human presence pushing out important predators and prey of the ecosystem so my first article um, on the slide is where the fact that global warming is completely changing the chemistry of the biological life that is able to grow within the ecosystem so it's not able to grow exactly like it should and this is affecting it in a way that they can't grow anymore so if you're losing your biological life you're losing a part of the ecosystem and then the human presence pushing out important predators and prey as i said with wolves you can there was a certain period of time where you could just shoot a wolf if you saw it because the national park system didn't want them in their environment so you're taking out these predators and these prey so for instance if you're shooting wolves you're trying to get rid of wolves completely the deer population is completely overcrowding the amount of deer cannot be held in this ecosystem because they are just eating all of the biological life and you don't have anything that can grow anymore you're disrupting the entire food pyramid um, some things that have been done to slow the decline is that zion national park as previously mentioned created a shuttle bus where they just shuttle people from key points in the community so that they don't have to drive so this obviously limits the amount of people that can get on the bus so it limits the amount of people that can get into the national park and then it lowers air pollution because people are no longer driving to the park and then overcrowding so people aren't making a mess of traffic as they're trying to get to the park what i think should be done is that there should be a ticketing program where there's only a certain amount of tickets that can be sold in the year to visit the national park so it's like we have a million tickets for this national park you either get it or you don't get to go this year i feel like that's the best way to slow the amount of people that are trying to get into the park um, i also feel like you could do a training program for students who want to be environmentalists where they instead of just sitting in a lab and trying to understand and study plants they could actually go into a national park study it maintain it in a way that they wouldn't be able to get it from being in a building and then my last way is to sacrifice a small portion of military funding towards reestablishing um, beautification of programs that would help the environment because there's just so much funding that can be put elsewhere thank you